Again, here's a, a high-end twin tube shock on the market. Uh, we did this. This is a PVP plot. Now you'll notice that in rebound, it actually does have more force at low speeds, and uh, and that's a good thing. That's what people typically notice when they put shocks on that that this would feel good and feel like it's uh, doing something for you. If you look at that same shock as a CVP, now the the this is not on purpose by any means, but the um, the graph shape changed a little bit, but uh, the the data is still the same. So we can see that in CVP, um, as the rebound stack opens, we've got almost zero force, and then about 1.5 inches per second, it starts generating force, and then it actually generates more force as it accelerates, and then it as it decelerates, it it generates a little less force, and then more as it gets closer to zero. So again, and then compression, you can see there's a couple of things going on there. As the uh, compression stack opens, it has a kind of a wave there. So there's something going on internally. And this by no means means that um, all of these shocks are bad shocks, but for whatever reason, uh, the one that we tested, it um, has eh, some, some things going on internally. Um, but again, people notice these things that this shock is really not generating any force in rebound as as your car begins to extend in rebound and so you can tell that because there's nothing going on and then all of a sudden you feel a lot of force and again for high-end monotubes doesn't matter if it's an AST or a Penske or a Moton or, or any of the other models out there this is what people notice when when they're driving they notice that the shock is generating force at those lower speeds and, and you truly can feel the difference with these shocks. Okay, so I call this one the pinnacle of shocks. This is um, the gold standard of shocks. Um, I have a lot of respect for this company. They make a really, really good shock. All of their products look great. Um, and so we did a PVP plot of it for comparison's sake. Um, so again, looks pretty good. Now this is a, a uh, shock uh, designed for a circle track application um, and you know this these shocks retail for thirty five hundred dollars I think if you were to do a set of them uh, but you know they run a lot of compression and, and not as much rebound um, if we go to the next slide the CVP plot of that high-end shock so again I mean now in comparison to what we saw with the high-end twin tube earlier notice how the lines follow each other uh, up and down the graph. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. That's why this shock is considered a very high-end shock. But, I will say one but with this, notice that at the lower speeds, it does leak a little bit as the shock accelerates. And again, could you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's here to point out that even in the highest end shocks, when you run a, a plot like this where you're accelerating the shock to 10 inches per second, or in our case 9.5 inches per second, um, there is going to be a little leak in the shock as it goes to accelerate. So, you know, again, the point is even the highest of high-end shocks can have this slight delay in it, and um, it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, I would consider this the one of the top shocks on the market and uh, you still see it here on their dyno plot. So, you know, a lot of people, especially on the internet, would like to look at this and say, well, this shock's terrible, but if this is the best shock that people perceive as the best shock on the market and it has a slight leak at this, then, you know, any shock that has a slight leak like this but has the really, really nice tight trace on it, I would consider to be a great shock. Okay, so of course this wouldn't be an AST presentation if I didn't present an AST shock. Um, I've done the same comparison that I've done on all the other ones here. This is a AST 5100 model, so um, in this case it's a, a pin to eye shock, aluminum bodied, uh, 40 millimeter piston shock that we're using here. It does not have a re remote reservoir on it. It's a single adjustable shock absorber. But you can see typical PVP plot, nice uh, rebound curve at the the nose end of it, um, and then tapering off, and then it runs a um, digressive curve for compression. 
So I did again the comparison. Uh, I took uh, I took the CVP plot and then added all of the CVP data to it. So uh, in this case, you can see um, that the lines are very tight running um, running the plots against there. Now I didn't do it. This is not a direct comparison to some of the other ones, but if you look back at at what we call the venerable old standby, this is a similar plot to that. But you can see how the compression overlays on top of itself nicely. And again, we've got a little bit of leakage uh, down at the very low speed. But uh, again, we even saw that with the highest of high-end shocks. And um, and when you do the comparison, unfortunately this has all of the data on it, but if you were to go back and look at a half inch per second or one and a half inches per second, you would see how tight the... the uh, the plot is together at those lower speeds. So, so anyway, just wanted to show a bunch of different versions of that, and of course, um, I can show a, a comparison here again, the similar old standby versus the AST, and how widespread the uh, plot is over on your left versus the really tight AST 5100 plot. Now, I used a 5100, but this could easily be a 4100 as well. Um, the internal parts are the same. Uh, what, you know, a lot of the external parts are different between those models, but but they're very much the same internally. So I wanted to keep this under uh, 25 minutes and give you just a little taste of shock dyno plots and uh, what to look for and what some of the competition will show you out there. This is again just a real very brief comparison. Um, there's a lot of really good shock models out there. I think I showed that. I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. But ASTs do make a really good shock, and you can see that when you put it on the dyno and do direct comparisons against some of the other models out there. So we'll be doing more of these uh, demonstrations and presentations. Uh, we've got a lot of data that we can present, and hope you enjoyed this one, and join us next time. Thank you very much.